So given it's the first day of 2022, I figured it would be nice to just talk a little bit about what the new year means to someone who is an apostate or what it's like to celebrate as an Axe JW. And well, to bring in the new year, I know I'm a little bit late, but I've got some Dilwini Winter Gold, I believe it's called, that Kaylee got me. Um, Kaylee normally buys me a bottle of whiskey for Christmas, and this is what I got this Christmas. It's quite nice, it's sweet, um, but also has that little bit of peat. Um, not overwhelming, just a nice little subtle hint of peat. And the peat taste is characteristic of some Scotch whiskey, and it's really nice. So, here's to 2022. I'm putting 2021 behind us. And that's the thing about the new year, right? It's a time for reflection, looking back over what happened in the previous year, uh, introspection, sort of looking at, you know, how far you've progressed, did you accomplish your goals? And I think sometimes we're very harsh on ourselves as human beings and we expect way too much of ourselves, even outside the cult, right? So inside the cult, the expectations placed upon members is completely unrealistic and leads to the detriment of the members, right? You end up suffering depression and, you know, internal shame, um, self-loathing, um, not always, I'm not speaking for everyone, obviously, but these are the things that being in the cult encourage because they, they have these high expectations and um, the, this high standard that is not actually attainable. They want you to achieve or reach for perfection, even though they keep preaching that we can't be perfect until the, the end of the 1000 year reign in the new system, right? But they still want you to be as perfect as you can possibly be, which is silly. Double standards, double speak, we know the cult is full of all those good things. But I think, you know, it's it's something, it's, it's an interesting opportunity. You know, we do, do get to look back on the past year and reflect on how far we've come. And it's important to remember to put things into perspective and not to have such high expectations of ourselves and feel like we failed things. And, you know, I mean, it's not as if we we're living up to those same expectations, but sometimes we can still be harsh on ourselves. And it's also time for looking forward to the year ahead. So before I talk a little bit about that and things we might want to consider as someone who's waking up currently, I just want to say that this is actually the first year where I've been excited by the new year. I mean, we handed our disassociation letters in uh, in February 20... 2019, I want to say, so almost three years ago. And even though it was three years back, and I had woken up way before that, right? Um, the reason it took that long to hand my disassociation letter in was because I was waiting for Kaylee to wake up too. Otherwise, I would have put it in years before. So, you know, I, I've been waking up for a long time or woke up a long time ago. But despite that, you know, this is still the first year where I felt like, yeah, the it's exciting to look forward to 2022. And I don't know if that's because of, you know, the pandemic and all of the things that have been going on since 2020. Maybe I want to be optimistic because I'm hoping things will change in the future. Then again, being realistic, we don't know. Or maybe it is because Part of me still didn't move on because I was waiting for Kaylee to wake up. So it still took me a while to get to the point where I can appreciate things like the new year. And that's something that I would like to just talk about for a second for anyone who's waking up. You know, there's a lot, there are a lot of new things when you wake up as an XJW, when you're, when you're freshly awoken, if you want to call it that. I mean, no, number one, there's a huge change in that you've you've lost everything, or you know if you're fading, there is this ever present risk or fear of losing all of your loved ones. You know if they find you out or whatever. You know there, there's all of that, and then you have all these new thoughts 
this new information that you know that was forbidden that was held withheld from you for such a long time because it's apostate then you have all that change and all the change going on inside your head where all of your beliefs were lies and then there are all these other things out in the world where you know you have christmas and new years and all the celebrations and all those things and i guess it can be an awful lot for anyone to take on board especially you know in the first year it can be very overwhelming so that's probably one of the things i would say is you know if you're feeling maybe not looking forward to holidays or you don't know how to feel about holidays or how to feel about certain things that you weren't allowed to do for a long time your whole life possibly give yourself a break you know don't expect too much of yourself don't try to force yourself to enjoy things that you maybe just don't enjoy at the minute because you have a lot going on if you're waking up you have a lot of things to undo before you can start building you have to, to unbuild a lot of doctrination before you can start rebuilding other things uh, like traditions and routines and you know the things that will help you to move on and heal as an individual so some of the things you might want to think about or consider as a newly awoken person if you're in that position is well what can you do to help yourself heal in the year ahead um, so what I would say is not to set a huge amount of goals for yourself that's something you know that the society and the culture encourages us to do is to you know tell yourself you're going to make x amount in income or that you're going to get a new job or you're going to lose x amount of pounds in weight because you know you want to be more healthy or you're going to join the gym and you're going to go three days a week and you're not never going to stop it's going to be a new routine and if those things are all good ideas and if that's what you want to do go for it by all means but also just give yourself time and i'm going to talk about this a little bit more in the future in a video specifically on waking up or things that you can do to help yourself um, to wake up and to cope with the process of waking up and i'll talk about these in more depth then but some of the things you might want to think about in the new year if you have recently woken up are getting a new hobby you know having something to fill your spare time if you have spare time you know we all have downtime right and the thing is when waking up if you become idle and you sort of like sit down for a minute and start to relax your mind begins to wander and it can go down some very deep and dark paths and tunnels it can go down the rabbit hole the what ifs the you know going through the grieving process the the anger the pain um the five stages of grief and eventually you know there will be there will be more acceptance later on down the line but you know your wounds are going to be pretty fresh and open in the beginning so getting a hobby and doing something you've never done before or something you maybe have always wanted to do um like a craft or writing learning a new musical instrument going to a, a, a nighttime class those things helped distract you from those dark thoughts and those things they they can fill your time fill that time that void that might otherwise be used to sort of wallow in all these negative things so that's one aspect another thing you might want to think about and it sort of relates to maybe finding a nighttime class for yourself maybe spend the year getting to know new people who aren't in the Jehovah's Witness organization making new friends and even if you haven't woken up yet or you know officially left or anything it's a good idea to try and build a network a new network before 
the old one completely vanishes. Um, or, you know, even if you're fading, eventually you're fading away and you, you know, you're going to distance yourself from your current support network in the organization. What do you want to replace that with? We all need support. We all need community. People need people for the most part. Even if we're introverts, right? I'm a real introvert. Um, it takes a lot of energy for me if I have to socialize with people, even if it's one-on-one, -on -one, if it's in a group of people, I get tired after maybe 60 minutes, you know, I'm ready to go at that point. I, I can make myself go longer if I need to, but I digress. You know, even if you're in that position, you still need other people um, or at the very least other people help, right? I can't speak for everyone. Um, another thing you might want to consider is changing your environment. Maybe start making plans about, you know, can you move to a new city? Um, I know most people aren't in a position where they can do that, but from a lot of the XJWs that I've spoken to over the years, the ones who seem to cope better and adapt better were those who took themselves and distanced themselves from the situation entirely. Like they moved somewhere else. You know, it, it doesn't even have to be hundreds of miles away. It can be the next town over. But putting some distance between yourself and the cause of your pain and suffering can be a way to, to move forward. So there's just some things that you might want to consider in the year ahead. And another thing about looking back, um, it's, it's nice to look in the rear view mirror every now and then. You know, we need to look in the rear view mirror if we're making an, a, a significant change in life, just to make sure we're going in the right direction. We're not going to cause an accident. We're not going to cause more trauma for ourselves. But you don't want to be driving, looking in the rear view mirror all the time because that's going to lead to bad things. We don't want to dwell on the past too much. You know, it's good to look back and go, okay, um, I learned a few lessons. For example, I did a, a little post earlier, a uh, write up on uh, 2021 in review, just for, you know, our friends and family to let them know what we went through and what we what we've done and you know lessons we've learned and things like that and uh, there were several points i mean our year was quite busy last year we had a new baby and there was a lot of uncertainty and questions around the delivery of the baby so that was difficult but we ended up with a beautiful little boy at the end of it and he's been a little, little ray of sunshine for going on eight months now can you believe it wow but it would be quite easy to look back at, at all the neg negative things around that, all the uncertainty and, and the, the scary parts of it. But what's that? That's not going to help anyone. Another thing is we started a new aspect of our business. So we started making games as well as publishing novels. And I tried to grow the company really fast. Um, because there's a lot of opportunity in that space and I can see that opportunity, but it's very difficult to get a balance, to strike a balance between growing your company at the correct rate and maintaining profitability, right? So you, that's a fine line. And if you go too far in either direction, well, you can hurt yourself. You know, if you're getting too much profit and not growing, then you're not going to be able to survive as a company and vice versa if you grow too fast faster than your profit allows you, you're going to run out of the trouble and that's the bit of trouble i almost ran into i kind of went a little bit too far in the growth side of things and we had to drop step back a bit and that was a big lesson it was a big scary lesson because you know my whole family relies on that company and that's our livelihood and if anything were to ever happen to it, we'd be in a lot of trouble. <laughs> uh, that's just another example. I could look, go back and go, oh, it didn't grow as fast as I wanted it to, or get really negative about it, about thinking about, you know, this could have happened, this happened, that happened, whatever. And there were a lot of mistakes made, made on my part, um, but rather than dwell on those mistakes, I could take them for what they are, and that is lessons. And I can move forward with those lessons and make sure I don't make the same mistakes again, right? As if you dwell on those things, you tend to 
you know, focus on the negative and you do make those mistakes over and over again. So that's something we, you know, as someone who's waking up, you might want to just not dwell too much on the past. I know that's a really unfair thing to say because when you're waking up, everything in the past is all you had. You know, your relationships with your friends and your family, everyone else in the congregation, your beliefs. For quite a few people, even their jobs, or they work in companies owned by other Jehovah's Witnesses. So they have to think about their livelihood. You know, um, all of those things, their identity, your identity is so connected to your past. It's a bit unfair for me to say, don't focus on the past. But you do get to a point after waking up and after accepting certain things and grieving for a while, where it does become easier to look to the future. And when you look to the future, you see that, oh, there is light at the end of the tunnel. The next year or the year after or whatever it might be, is going to be better, right? And it does get better. I mean, all of the people I've spoken to, it has gotten better for them. It was really dark and horrible when I woke up, but it got better for me. And the same is true for my family, or those who woke up at least. So just a little thought about the new year. Um, I don't know, it's, it's kind of funny being excited about the new year. We, we have a lot to look forward to in our family. I think we mentioned in a previous video that we're going to be moving. In about six months, we're putting the house on the market in about four weeks time. So we'll see how that goes. It's very uncertain. We don't know what's going to happen. You know, with the pandemic, it could get better in six months. It could get worse in six months. But, you know, fingers crossed, it gets better. Um, it's been a very difficult and challenging time for a lot of people. Hopefully, it'll come to an end soon. It will come to an end. That's the thing. All good things come to an end. All bad things also come to an end. It's just a matter of when, right? <laughs> Fingers crossed, it's soon. But we're not focusing too much on that right now. We're focusing on moving on. You know, we are now in a position where we can change our environment. Um, you know, we have made some really nice friends since leaving the organization. And it'll be pretty sad parting from them. You know, we'll see them again in the future at some point, but Saying goodbye to those friends is going to be difficult because they were a big part of us waking up, you know, a big part of us moving on and reintegrating with society. And they helped us out a lot. We owe those people a lot. And they've been very understanding and they've listened to us and supported us and they have done so unconditionally, right? They don't want anything. They don't have any expectations of us. They're just really nice, kind people. And that's the way, that's what relationships and friendships should be, right? You shouldn't be nice to someone because you want something from them. You're just nice to them because that's the right thing to do. <laughs> and that's one, that's something that can, it can be a bit of a challenge getting used to that as well, because you're so, even if you don't openly realize it's all conditional when you're in the organization, subconsciously, you know there's something wrong. You know that all of these things that are around me, they are only there as long as I keep towing the religious line. As long as I keep doing as I am told. As long as I am a good little brother or sister. And as soon as I stop being a good little brother or sister, it all falls apart. Because there are conditions attached to everything. So that's an interesting thing, you know, coming to terms with the fact that there are relationships and there is love and there is kindness that is unconditional and it's out there in the world, not in the cult, <laughs> which is so funny because you're taught the complete opposite. But yeah, once, once you come face to face with reality, it kind of blows you away. So it's going to be sad seeing our friends go or say goodbye to them because we're the ones that are going but we feel like you know we 
we need the change. We feel like we need to move on. But not just that we need to move on. Um, I mean, where we currently live, we went through the waking up process and all those things that go along with it. So it'll be nice to put that behind us, you know, a new chapter in our lives. But also, we just want to travel. We want to see things. We want to live in other parts of the world. We want the girls and Kieran, our son, to experience other cultures and languages. And if we're in a position to do that, then why not? Um, and I've, I've always wanted to travel more. And being in the organization has taken a lot of those opportunities away from me. So this year coming is going to be interesting in that regard. Our company is going to continue to grow, although we're going to be a little bit more cautious in how we approach that and not take too much risk, which is usually stemming from me. So I've learned that lesson. Um, last year, I focused a lot on my health. You know, I, I've been big into weightlifting. And I'll tell you what, my life and my mood, my health, my relationships, my business, my work ethic, quite a few things have changed for the better ever since I started lifting weights. So I would actually recommend wholeheartedly, if you're waking up, and even if you're not, and you're thinking of another hobby, or looking for ways to improve your life, or the year ahead, I would highly recommend lifting weights. Um, I mean, I'm not a power lifter, or I don't do it professionally, I'm not an athlete, as you can tell. <laughs> but there's something to be said for being able to lift weights. But yeah, I mean, if you're newly awake or if you've been awake for a while and you, you're maybe not, you're not, you're coming into the new year and you're not too sure how to feel about it, don't be too hard on yourself, you know? It might, maybe it just takes a while, it'll take a bit longer for you to get excited about a new year. This is the first year I've been excited about it. And maybe you'll never be excited about a new year. Not everyone's excited by the new year. It's just the way it is. And if there are things that you're looking to do to improve your lot in life and to, you know, there's a lot to be said for wanting to improve yourself and self-improvement, right? Because I think, Society wants you to believe that things are the way they are and there's nothing you can do about it. And when you look at the cult, which we used to actually call the society, can you remember that? Can you remember calling the Watchtower organization, the Jehovah's Witnesses, the society? And then I think we were told to stop doing that and we gradually stopped because I think when you look back, it really does add that culty kind of feel to it, doesn't it? But even, you know, inside the organization, they don't want you to progress. They don't want you to improve yourself personally. Because when you start to improve yourself personally and educating yourself and, you know, fixing your ignorance, <laughs> well, then you start to ask questions and little cracks start to appear in your belief system and you start to realize it is what it actually is and you start to wake up. So they don't want you to improve. And there's an element of that in the world at large. It's not just a cult thing, right? There's a, an attitude like stay in your own lane. How dare you try to become something that you aren't. You were born that way. I don't believe that. I don't believe you were born anyway. And I believe that the world is yours for the taking. All you have to do is take it. And I make it sound easy. It's not easy, there's a lot to that. But I believe if you work hard and smart that you can self-improve and you can improve your lot in life and you can do almost anything you want. I think Kaylee said that in a previous video, you can do anything you want. It's a, it's incredible, the freedom. But you kind of have to, once you come out of the cult, maintain that skepticism about everything, about government, about culture, 
about beliefs, about other people, just society in general. And you will see similarities and you will see ways to sort of get work around those things because no one should ever tell you what you can and can't do in terms of your self-improvement. So yeah, regardless of what you choose to do in the new year or whether you choose to do anything, I wish you and your family the best in 2022 and I wish you every success.